guys, Nike here. I wanted to do a, uh, a tier list, since that's the hot thing, of uh, all the different raid bosses, including CMs, in Guild Wars 2. Um, we were talking about this on Teapot's stream, and I thought that it would be uh, fun for me to give my take and also uh, sort of discuss what... Uh, where, where maybe I differ from some other people and give you my rationale on why. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. Okay, so this is the normal modes and the CMs because quite often the normal modes will be a little bit different from the CMs. Um, so just uh, for starters, um, what do we have here? We have Bandit Trio. Uh, I believe that's what this is. Um, Bandit Trio, I uh, do not particularly enjoy doing it. Um, I wish I could skip it while doing Wing 2, but it's not quite the worst thing in the game. It's just something that you have to do, so I'm going to put Bandit Trio in uh, C tier there. It's not terrible, but it's not something that you like to do. Um, okay. So now I want to do, while sticking to Wing 2, is Sloth. Sloth is... When Sloth came out, it was an absolute pug killer um, because people didn't really have any sort of eating strategies with the mushrooms and people were kind of... And the ground was really punishing and the, 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 little, the poison a expanding AoEs that you have to drop in the corners was really punishing. And uh, I think it has a high CC requirement. So it just has a lot of different things that you have to do for your group to be successful. And people have strategies now for it, but it can still turn into um, a real clown fiesta with, with a group, even a good group. Um, so I really like Sloth. I think it's a good boss. It's not one of the best bosses. It's not, it's not like, oh man, it's not like, a boss I look forward to doing, like, oh man, I gotta do Sloth, but it's good. So I'm gonna put it in A tier. It's, it's a great boss. Now, Slippery Slubbling adds uh, quite a bit to the Sloth encounter in terms of micromanagement. It adds some individual responsibility and a little bit more planning, but I don't think it makes it too much harder. Once, once you have sort of figured out your strategy for the Slubbling, it's not really that much harder. The only thing is you're essentially nine manning the fight. And I don't know if that's that's super interesting. Nine manning a raid boss, like people already do that. That's not a problem. If it added more HP to Sloth or whatever, I would say, okay, go ahead. And and we'll talk Slippery Slubbling being good. But I'm gonna go ahead and say Slippery Slubbling is like a C. Um, no, nobody does it for fun. Uh, and, and And that's basically it. Um, okay, so then moving on, uh, let's let's say some of these aren't labeled. So, okay, statues. Statues is terrible. Statues is one of the worst uh, encounters. I think the eye, uh, or not the eye, but the uh, the guy that you have to like throw stuff in his throw stuff in his mouth and then go up in the air and get the souls. Like it, it's okay. But the, the Frozen King is terrible, and, and the eyes, it's just terrible. And especially doing the statue's achievement, the five-minute achievement, is it, it's like fun once, but no one, would, no one ever wants to do it again. I think statue's is D tier. It's one of, it's one of the worst. Um, River of Souls is better than statue's, but again, it's nothing I look forward to doing, and most groups have figured out how to cheese it. And... It's not super fair to rate these based on when they came out. I think we have to rate them based on today's, uh, a as they are today, and as they are with the strategies that people have developed. And so as a result, I think River is basically C tier. You just you just wanna get, get over with it and get it done, but you don't like hate doing it um, like you do statues. Statues you just hate doing. Um, yeah, so. Then we come to, um, man, I can't even tell what some of these things are because they're not labeled super well. Like, like what is this? Uh, is this Escort? Um, okay, I'm going to assume that this is Escort. Uh, 
here. Uh, and Escort is Statue's tier. Um, Escort is not good. Um, Glenna is annoying. The dialogue that Glenna has is annoying. Escorting her is annoying. The very first time we ever did it in progression, I thought it was fun. And I thought it was sort of a step up from from like what like sort of like bandit trio but as time has gone on i actually like bandit trio more and i like escort uh quite a bit less so, so there's that um so then next we have uh twisted castle is that what this is um man i can't i can't tell if this is supposed to be twisted castle or, or what or I, I can't even tell what that this is supposed to be. Like, like what are these things? Um, I can't t I can't tell what some of these are. Uh, so we'll go with the ones that I can tell. Um, Conjured Amalgamate. We'll do that next. Conjured Amalgamate is not good. Uh, Conjured Amalgamate is a boss that there is very, very little room for innovation in tactics. And basically the tactics that people do now for speed clears is the tactics that people did for speed clears like week two when they were trying to optimize the fight. There's just not a lot of room for optimization. It's just like a fight that you do and you get over with and you're like, you're like, okay, it's, it's fine, but it's nothing like exciting and you don't look forward to it. Um, so I'm going to say that Conjured Amalgamate is B tier because it's not, it's not nearly as bad as River or bandit trio, but it's certainly not a good boss like sloth. So it, it's it's comfortably B tier. Um, I think then. Uh, so let, let's let's continue. We have um, where is Largos? All right, Twin Largos. Twin Largos, pretty good fight. Um, again, I think I'm gonna put it B tier. It's not not. It's not a fight that you're like super excited about, and I think one of the things that holds it back is that just Mirage is is so good at it and has always been so good at it that it's kind of like limited what you can do with the comps. Um, I would say it's better than Conjured Amalgamate, but not as good as Sloth, so it's like B plus tier, um, not terrible. Um, and then as a result, I'm going to say that Largo CM is also B tier. It doesn't add anything to the fight. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna grade it harsher. Largo's CM is C tier. It adds basically nothing to the fight. It doesn't even make it any harder. You just have to jump off the platform and then glide back a couple times. Like it's not fun. It doesn't make it fun. More fun. It doesn't make it harder. It doesn't change your strategy at all. Nothing changes. Um, so. Largo CM is a is a fail CM as far as I'm concerned. Um, okay, so then we have um, let's say all right, Cairn. Cairn, I'm going to say is a solid B tier boss. I kind of like Cairn uh, quite a bit. I think it. Uh, over as time has gone on there's been several different ways that people have adapted to speed killing the fight i think it is a fight that good groups take for granted as easy but you just have to watch uh, inexperienced players playing it and realize how bad it can go um and it's not meant to be hard it's the easiest boss or one of the easiest bosses of the easiest raid wing um, but it's a fight that you never go, man, I hate that fight. It's, it's just fun. Um, but it, I wouldn't put it A tier. It's not, it's something you like look forward to. Um, kid, uh, Karen CM, however, I'm gonna go ahead and put that C tier. It's not, it doesn't add anything. It's just not fun. It's not special. It just adds like an annoyance onto the fight that is just not fun. So we skip it. Um, Okay. So now Matthias. Matthias is the first S tier boss. Matthias is just amazing. Um, we love Matthias. Uh, like I, I've, Matthias is one of my favorite bosses. It's the reason why I look forward to doing uh, Wing Two. 
the other the first two bosses sloth is good um but if sloth was the best boss of the wing i would be done after sloth i just wouldn't do the other two bosses um but matthias is so good that i love that i'm willing to sit through trio to do it so matthias you're the man um okay so then we get to one of my uh bosses that i have a uh, a hate hate relationship with and that is um and that is going to be keep construct which is going to be straight into d tier you might be like what what do you mean d tier or d tier this is the buggiest piece of crap boss uh ever they reused like the character model from gorsival they reuse like a whole bunch of stuff like that they reused like the rigging from gorsival they there's ai bugs there's like stuff that like shouldn't happen but happens there's stuff that you sh that you can skip that you shouldn't be able to skip there's stuff that you can't skip that you should be able to skip it is just a complete clusterfuck of a boss um and it's not fun i've if you if if i think back on my guild wars 2 raiding career at the times that i've raged at a boss for like bugging out or screwing us or or whatever keep construct is the one that has happened the most because there will be times where you're doing keep construct and you do everything right you your 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 team has flawless execution of of your strategy and you still fail because of some bug and for me i'm out that i i, I can't tolerate that no go so uh, keep construct D tier. Get out of get out of my life. Um, conjured amalgamate C M. The C M is worse than the normal mode because it adds a trivial thing where your chronos or whatever have to bring reflex. It's it's it, it adds nothing to the fight, so it, it's going to go into C tier. Um, yeah, pretty much get out of here. All right. Um, Sabir is pretty good fight. Um, I'm going to say that Sabir is B tier. Oh, hold on, someone calling. All right, I have to send out a voicemail real quick. Um, Sabir is B tier. It's good, not great. It's it's a fight that you 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 do you don't you don't hate doing it, but it, it's whatever. Okay, so Sabir, it's not it doesn't like make you like hate life itself. Um, Sabir CM is a disappointment because it is just not as good as... It doesn't add enough to make it, like, this really cool thing. So it goes right to C tier. Um, it just... The, the, the challenge mode is just not an improvement on the fight. Um, Mursat Overseer is going to go right into C tier because it is a boring, literal DPS golem. Um, I... DNT, we did do a speed kill record on it once, and it was fun to really, really optimize and just do perfect rotations and um, and all of that, and grind for like one second of, of difference. Um, but no one, but most people don't have that experience. It's just like kind of like this like thing that stops you from getting to better bosses in the wing. So uh, it goes, it goes there. Um, Samurog, solidly B tier. Samurog normal mode. Not uh, a boss that, when you're doing wing four, it's not hard. People very rarely wipe on Samurog normal mode, even even kind of bad groups, because um, really the only challenge is the break bar uh, that you have to do. And either group, and what'll end up happening is you'll join a group, they'll fail the break bar, and then they'll go, okay, we're failing the break bar. Let's bring more CC skills. And people will bring more CC skills. And then you just easily win. Um, but it's not bad. It's not a terrible boss. It's just not particularly super fun. Um, however, uh, we'll go ahead and say Samurog CM goes right up to S tier. It has, it's like such, it's, it's a totally different fight. Samurog CM is a totally different fight from Samurog normal mode. It is S tier all the way. It is one of the best bosses that they've designed if you've not completed samurog cm you should definitely do it especially with other new players as you try to figure it out progressing on samurog cm was 
very challenging um, and, and very hard. So I highly recommend giving that a shot. Um, so then we go to next. Um, I believe that this is Twisted Castle. Um, I think. I assume, I'm going to assume this is twi this one is Twisted Castle. I don't know if it's Twit. So instant D tier there. Get, get out of get out of here. Um, so yeah, Twisted Castle. Let me go ahead and get out of here. I assume that's what that is. If if that's if I'm wrong about that, then let me know in the comments. Um, okay. So then we have Adina Normal Mode. Adina Normal Mode. We're gonna say it's a solid A. It's a good boss, really good boss actually, as far by Anet standards. Um, you're happy to do it every week. It's it's a fun fun boss. It's the best boss of that wing. So, a spoiler alert. Um, except for the CM. Uh, the CM is the best boss of Wing Seven, Adina CM. It is S tier. It is. Perfectly designed boss. Anet did an amazing job on that, and they should be complimented for it. Adina, CM, big thumbs up from me. I highly, highly recommend you guys doing it. Um, so this is Trio Omega Lol. I, I don't know, what, what is this then? If, if this isn't Trio, what, 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 what are we talking about here? I'm just gonna, if it's, if, if this is like trio CM, I don't know. I I don't know what we're ta what we're looking at here. I can't even I can't tell. I'm just gonna put that there. Whatever, dude. Um, Zara, I love Zara. Wing three progression was one of my favorites. I love, I loved all the different Zara speed kills that we did. We did several Zara records with all different strats. Zara progression was super fun. Um, one of my favorite progressions during to get our first kill. I love Zara. Um, it has a lot of bugs. If it was bug free and I didn't have in my brain the memories of all these bugs, I would I might be tempted to list it higher. But uh, Zara is just a solid solid A tier boss. Um, it redeems the wing. The rest of the wing is trash. Um, Escort and uh, Twisted Castle trash trash um kc trash but zara you're up there in a tier so it makes it kind of sometimes worth doing all right so now we're getting to uh the, the real nitty gritty here and we are going to go to um kadim the peerless normal mode kadim the peerless normal mode it is not garbage like i would say that kadim the Peerless Normal Mode is B tier. It is not in the same league as Sloth, Zara, or Adina. It, it it's not as good as those, and I, I don't care what anyone says. It has a lot of mechanics, and it's 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 complex, but in the end, it's not particularly compelling. It it has complexity without having fun added fun, and as a result, not not super interested. But of course, is it better than Slippery Slubbling or River or Largos CM or Karen CM? Yes, it's way better than those. Um, I would put it along the lines of, yeah, like Conjured Amalgamate is about how I feel about it. So it goes slots into B tier. Kadim the Peerless CM, which is where? I don't see it. Where, where is my Kadim the Peerless CM? Oh, right here. Uh, the CM is a bit of a disappointment because it doesn't make the fight that much more interesting. It also goes B tier. I feel it. it's almost the same fight. Fun fact. I was, uh, when, when Wing 7 came out, I was sort of like on hiatus from Guild Wars 2 and I didn't get to do progression on this wing. And so I just jumped into a group uh, of, of people that had experience for my first ever clear. My first ever clear of Kadim the Peerless was CM. So I didn't, I, I, I beat the CM before I beat the normal mode. Um, so I, I look at them as the same fight. 
Uh, for me, I don't. I, I didn't have experience with the normal mode. I still think of the CM as the normal mode, just because that's how I learned. Um, so I'm putting I'm putting them on the same level. Uh, I can give or take. If you said, hey, we're doing normal mode, Kadim the Peerless, okay. If you said, hey, we're doing challenge mode, Kadim the Peerless, I'd say, okay, it doesn't doesn't really bother me. Um, okay, Mursat Overseer CM. It is a great fight. It is what the normal mode should have been, but it's not like S tier. It's not like something that you're like super excited about. It's just a fun, challenging, good fight. Mursat with fun mechanic. Mursat Overseer CM goes A tier. Perfection. Okay. Um, so this one's going to be controversial. This is Sabatha. Um, Sabatha, I'm going to put solidly into... Uh, I'm very divided between B and A, but I'm going to go A. I think Sabatha has not aged super well. Um, Sabatha at launch was, well, I mean, there were only three raid bosses at the time, so it would be pretty much, uh, it would be pretty, there's not, there couldn't really do a tier list, but, but Sabatha hasn't aged well. It's, it's, it's pretty easy now. Um, the mechanics are, are, are very simple, really. Um, and if, and with, with power creep and, and DPS that, even like decent pugs have now like sabatha is just a joke um so i i, I wouldn't particular and, and i don't find the mechanics like insanely fun um it it's uh, i'm talking myself and putting into b there we go sabatha you go into b it's it's fine um so then we have gorsival gorsival I'm going to go ahead and put Gorsival into A. Now, I think of Gorsival is on the same level as Sabatha. I think Gorsival is on the same level of Sabatha in terms of fun. However, there are certain things that are going to push Gorsival ahead for me. Um, Gorsival, for good groups, is whatever. It, it's just a face roll boss that you just blast. For, but it still has a purpose as it has a DPS check. To do no glide Gorsival, there is a DPS requirement, and it's a low DPS requirement. I mean, people can like four man it, right? And, and not have to glide or, or whatever, five man. I don't know what it exactly it is. But you don't, but, but nonetheless, you still see pugs that, that fail. So um, I think it's fun that, and, and, it's kind of burned into my memory because Gorsival progression at, at wing one launch was one of the hardest things we ever did because we were all bad at the game and we didn't have very good builds and yada, yada, yada. Gorsival progression is took a long time. I think um, D&T, we spent maybe like 18 hours in total on Gorsival progression, like... And that's pretty comparable to like what the other top guilds did. Um, it hard fight. It was really hard when when the DPS check on that fight was a challenge to hit. It was super hard. And yes, I'm rating these as they are today, and not like in terms of memory. But I I I, I look at it equal to Sabatha. The difference being, Gorsival. The only tie break between Gorsival and Sabatha is Gorsival took us 18 hours to progress and had a super exclusive drop, the, the infusion. Sabatha took us four hours to progress and has no, no special rewards that are worth a damn. So purely, uh, so I look at them as totally equal, except for the fact that Gorsival has better, has a cool drop and I have fond memories of it. So it goes one tier higher. And that's enough about uh, Gorsival. So then next we have in wing one, Veil Guardian. Veil Guardian is going to go to S tier. And some people might say, whoa, I think you should put that in A. No, it's better than, look at the bosses in A tier. It's better than those bosses. It's, it's not the hardest boss in the world because we're now good at the game. But it's still complex and punishing if you make mistakes. If you play with a group of noobs, um, and they're they're just going to get teleported by the blues all over the place. The the electric floor is going to catch up with them. 
Um, they're going to, like, the tanking is going to be just god-awful. It's a fun fight, and it has tons of room for optimization and tons of room for experimenting with comps and builds. Um, it, and it's mechan the mechanics are complex, and they add fun. They're, com they're fun with complexity. It's sort of like the opposite of Kadeem the Peerless that has a bunch of mechanics, but none of them are particularly fun. Veil Guardian has a bunch of mechanics, and each one makes the fight more fun. So Veil Guardian goes S tier. I, I would highly recommend that. Uh, okay. So now we're getting to some of the interest, super interesting bosses. Um, we have Kadeem 1. Kadeem 1 is a great boss. I am going to put it in A tier, not S tier, uh, like like Teapot would. I think it is kind of Resident Sleeper in a couple different roles. The fight has tons of individual responsibility, and I like that. That's one of the things that I think makes a fight really good, is that you really need all your players to be on point and to do their job, and that's really good. Um, so I'm going to put it in A tier. I enjoyed doing speedrun records of this boss. I think it's really fun. I think progression on the boss was really fun when we did Wing, wing 6 progression. It was, it was good. Um, but it isn't among the... It isn't the very best tier of bosses, in my opinion. However, Kadeem, the Kadeem 1 CM is definitely um, S tier. You might as well not even do the fight in normal mode. Once you have a good static raid group, when you get to Kadeem every week, you should just do the CM because it's way, it, it doesn't make it like insanely harder. Um, it shouldn't be really any harder at all for you. Um, but it does make it more fun in that ev it's a fight where in normal mode, eight out of 10 people have to play perfectly or not perfectly. Eight out of 10 people have to do their job to get it done. And you can probably carry two two bad players with you um, who, who fuck things up and you can find a place to hide them to where they won't continuously wipe your group. In Kadeem CM, if you have two people that just feed uh, constantly, like it's, it's just going to be so demoralizing. So it, all 10 people have to be good. There's individual responsibility. There's very s distinct roles. There's, uh, there's a lot of movement. Um, you have to be very situationally aware um, very aware of your positioning. It's a great fight. So Kadeem, uh, Kadeem 1 CM goes S tier. No question about it. Desmina normal mode is going A tier. Super fun fight. I've also another fight that I've uh, enjoyed speed running and, and doing record runs on. It is um, a fair fight. You never... It does have a lot of RNG, uh, which makes doing speed runs somewhat harder than than some other bosses it's not a clockwork fight like things can happen randomly the wall you can just get ridiculously bad wall luck and then you're screwed um but for the most part you can work around all of those things and it punishes players who tunnel vision because they don't see the walls and they don't have and and you can even see people it exposes people that that have bad brains when it comes for geometry um so there's like a thing in, in, in different sports uh, called like probably in, in like soccer or American football, uh, like angles of pursuit where one guy is running down the field and you're trying to catch up with him and you have to, you have to run at an angle from across the field to intercept him. As he's running straight, you have to run at an angle. Some people, their brains are just wired so that they can just instantly know the correct angle to run at and other people don't and they look like idiots when it comes to avoiding the walls on on desmina on desmina you can just see the people whose whose pipo brains and their their papega brains they can't see where they have to run to avoid the wall and they'll tr you you'll see them try to get away from the wall and realize they went the wrong direction because they have smooth brains and they die to the wall, and I think that's really fun. It exposes people who, who aren't very very with it. Um, so then moving on, 
Does mean a CM? We're gonna put that solidly in B tier. It doesn't make the fight really any dip any harder. Um, I remember we when we were progressing wing five CMs. The, I think we killed Desmina CM on our first attempt, uh, like week two. Like, like af after we killed Doom for the first time, we started doing CMs, and we killed Desmina CM first pull, and we were like, "What is even?" We, like, we didn't really know the mechanics. We were like, "What's different?" And we knew sort of that the worms didn't die, but we were like, uh, "Okay, like, so what?" Like. It didn't change how we approached the fight one bit. It, it's it's fine. It's not a terrible fight because Desmina regular mode is so good that the CM can't be that bad. Um, they can't like ruin the fight. I mean, I guess that they could design one that ruined it, but for whatever re for whatever, it it's it's fine. It's good. It goes B tier. It's not as bad as like Karen CM, which is just like a meme. Um, but yeah, it goes it goes B tier solidly. Okay. So then, Deimos normal mode, I am inclined to give that a solid B. Um, I like it. I think I think it's pretty good. It's a pretty good fight. Um, yeah, it, it's it's fun. There's there's a lot of different strategies. It's there's a lot of like you can flex and have really good DPS because of the the ghost debuff that makes him take a lot more damage. So yeah, there's 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 a lot to it. Um, it's really cinematic fight. The the the, the last ten percent in the underworld where you're in, where you're killing him, really fun. Um, actually, I'm talking myself into putting it into an A. I, I'm realizing how much how fun it actually is. So yeah, we'll put that A tier. It, it's good. It's a good fight. The CM of Deimos is also going to be A tier. If I had to pick between the two, I would actually say normal mode is better. Now, why is normal mode better? The CM is good. However, the mechanics of the CM are such that stacking Necros with Epidemic is just the right play. It's just the best strategy by far that you can do. There's no better strategy for it than stacking Necros with Epidemic. Um, it... If it had more room for innovation, I would probably put it higher. But I personally, uh, and, and it might be funny coming from me saying that because our guild is like so into, for a while there, we were so into using Epidemic to break speedrun records. But like, everyone knew that Necros with Epidemic was the best strategy for Deimos CM week one when Deimos CM came out. It was the best strategy, and everyone knew it. Years later now, it's still the best strategy. Nothing has changed. No one has really innovated. Um, it's just over... So it, the, the, the CM mechanic makes it harder. It is harder and more challenging, for sure. But it isn't, any, it isn't that much more fun, um, especially from a theorycraft perspective. It's not particularly fun. So boom. It, it goes. It's it's tied on A, because um, it. But that if I had to make a tiebreaker, I would say that Deimos normal mode is just like slightly ahead, or maybe it's like slightly below. Like so, like Deimos normal mode is like an A, and Deimos CM is like A minus, but it's still A tier. And now, last but not least, is Doom. Doom normal mode, A tier. It. Progression on Doom was just insanely fun. Insanely fun. Um, it was a step up in difficulty from any raid boss that, that Guild Wars 2 players had fought before in-game. It's still fun. Now it's more about how fast can you kill it rather than can you kill it. Of course, as time goes on and people get better and people have more practice, that's inevitably going to happen. But it's still just a very cool fight. The only thing keeping it from being S tier, in my opinion, is the pre-event. The pre-event is just so long and so terrible. And it's, it's, you just wish you could get it over with. So uh, that, that keeps it from being S tier. Um, it go, but it is a solid A tier fight. And I think that um, if you haven't done Doom, if you haven't killed Doom, 
and like I'm not talking about people that buy raids or people that like leech carries off of people and don't actually know the fight. If you haven't actually done Doom properly with a group of people who are all basically the same skill level and like learn the fight as a team, you're you're miss you're, you haven't played Guild Wars 2. It's one of those really uh, fundamental encounters in the game that that set it apart. And then Doom CM, S tier, no question about it. Again, it's another. It is. You could say, well, didn't you blast Deimos CM um, for being like this necro obvious necro fight um, when Doom CM is obviously a necro fight? It's true. Doom CM is heavily biased towards necros. It, it is. I, I don't deny it as a DPS fight. Like it's an epidemic spree. However, the challenge mode of it with him having more HP and the Ender's Echo makes it so compelling. It is so compelling. And people that haven't ever done it, and especially people that haven't done normal mode, people that might just be like non-raiders that look at it and go, how much harder does the Ender's Echo make it? The Ender's Echo makes it so much harder because there will inevitably be in every group of people that are learning the fight one or two people whose brains just do not function in that in the right way that you need to pay attention to the ender's echo you have to be able to keep one eye on doom and what he's doing and what mechanic he's about to do and then you have to have your eyes peeled and at least some percentage of your of your focus on the Ender's Echo, and knowing where the Ender's Echo is at all times. If you tunnel vision on the Ender's Echo, Ender's Echo, you will not do any damage to the boss. You'll be completely just wasting your time in the fight. If you tunnel vision on Doom, you will constantly be picked up by the Ender's Echo, and you will get smashed, um, and your team will hate you because you're you're too dumb to your brain is too slow your iq is too low to handle it to handle multitasking like that and it is as a result uh probably in my opinion the preeminent encounter in guild wars 2 you could argue if you took a bunch of non-raiders like 10 people who have never raided before and dumped them in kadeem 1 cm and then dumped them the same people in Doom CM that they would probably kill Doom CM first, and maybe I would agree with that that Kadim One CM would be harder for non raiders to do. Um, but I think the fact that Doom is an iconic boss in the Guild Wars Two franchise, and the fact that the CM is so groundbreaking um, when it came out in terms of difficulty. Um, and, and the fact that it still presents difficulty to this day, um, I would say that Doom CM is the uh, preeminent encounter in Guild Wars 2. And if you have not completed Doom CM in Guild Wars 2, um, you can't really call yourself a raider. You can't say that, yeah, I'm a Guild Wars 2 raider if you've never beaten Doom CM. It's sort of like a rite of passage um, to do so. And, and that's it. This is the tier list. I don't think there's any arguments that anyone could make with any of the things that I've placed. So I expect this video will get zero comments. I, if you have a comment, first check to see if you're stupid. And if you are stupid, maybe don't leave the comment. If you check to see if you're stupid and you still think you're smart and you still need to leave the comment, I guess go ahead and do it. But I still don't see how you could possibly disagree with any of these rankings. So... Um, with that said, thank you guys for watching this video, and uh, I will see you guys next time. Peace.